everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really pretty diamond top fold card. Now this isn't one of my creations, I actually saw this over on the um, Christina Griffiths Griffin? Yeah, Christina Griffin um, on her Facebook channel and this was from seven years ago so I don't know where it's come from before that but this is where I've got the inspiration for. So. This one is using the A4 size that she uses, but the next one I show, I'm adapting slightly so that even if you're in the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Europe, the rest of the world, you, we all have different kind of letter paper, A4, that kind of stuff. So I've done it to the size that I think everybody can then use. So tweaked it a little bit, but basically this is what you have. And then you open it up and I need to put a white panel in here, but that would be where you obviously write your message and then it folds flat, but it's really quite cool. When it opens like that, you can see it's kind of like a little roof on it, but it stands up perfectly. So you're seeing it from a bird's eye view, but that's the profile you have when it's stood upright. Um, I've used the really gorgeous V&A 2 collection, which I'll show you in a moment. These flowers are made from washi tape stickers. So I'm gonna show you that. And everything else is all part of the collection, but I've got some ribbon, I've got that. This is like a cotton ribbon here, and then the bow got embellishments and I just think it looks really nice and then with the 12 by 12 paper pack I've made the matching envelope because it's an 8 by 6 card so it fits in that envelope perfectly so this is what we're going to make so I'll put that to one side bring in everything I've got here lots and lots of stuff so this is the washi tape stickers now I actually had these in my unboxing video but forgot to show them they were there on the table but then I seemed to push them to one side so this is what we're going to be using and I will show you how to use those they're really good I've used this is the ribbon so it's the V&A like I said V&A 2 so it's the cotton ribbon these are the mini bows that I've used I've used the pearls here and the papers are here so this is the 8x8 which I've used for the actual card and then the 12x12 one there where the images are slightly more blown up that's what I used for the envelopes okay pop that to one side that's for the envelope so we don't need that right now oh and there's also the sticker pack there which as I said before whenever I've got the stickers I just stick them onto cardstock so I've just stuck that there on the pink um, scraps from my main card base there and then I've just put the just for you okay so yeah pop that one there so we go through all of these bits as I go through the card I'm just going to get straight into the scoring so I've got here a piece of 11 by eight and a quarter okay so whether you're using letter paper or a4 you will just need to cut one of the sides down slightly but you will need that size so along the eight and a quarter inch you want to you want to score at four and one eighth of an inch okay now if you have got A4, you can keep it at A4 because that is the width of our A4, which is eight and a quarter, so you will still be scoring at four and one eighth. Then if you've got the length, yours will now be coming off here at 11 and three quarters, 11 and five eighths. That doesn't matter. You could have 12 inches here if you want to. The next score line you need to then do at four and one eighth. So basically you're creating a square now here and here, a four by one eighth of an inch square, okay? Then flip it back again, so those two squares are now at the top. This middle score line here, where it crosses over, from that crossed over point, you want to come down, grab my ruler, and you'll want to use a pencil here, but from that point there, you want to come down, oh, wrong side, one and a quarter, okay? And just mark a little pencil mark. With the two squares at the top and you've just marked with a pencil or just put a little wedge there at that um, one and a quarter down. If you then pop it on its side here, so you can see there, there's my big square and my big square and then I've got my two larger rectangles. Again, from this score line here, you want to come down three and one eighth of an inch, okay? and then go across up to here again from that score line and just mark at three and one eighth of an inch. Then flip it back this way again and from that little marker that you've done just down from this crossed over section, you're going to score from that down to the outer little markers or pencil marks, like so. And like so. so. If 
I just bring that up, you can just see all this, the score lines. There we go, you can see them perfectly. So this is your four and one eighth of an inch score line right the way down through the middle. This is your other four and one eighth of an inch score line across. Then down from that was one and a quarter, and then across down to these ones here, which, what did I say they were? Three and one eighth of an inch, all from this score line here. And that's what you should have. Okay, next you want to burnish all of your score lines. So I'm going to do my largest one there, and then this one here. And then fold it in half, and then these ones just fold right across one way and fold right across the other. Okay, open it back up, and then as you bring, sorry, that way, so you want to bring this forward and this bit is going back okay so as you push that down you want this to come forward so as I'm pushing that and bending it can you see there so just fold kind of bring that down and as you do keep this inside and you can see there how the whole thing folds you get it's such a quick fold when I done this after just watching the you know the tutorial and then I just went and done my measurements it's really quick now if you're slightly out can you see there this has come up slightly higher. What I'm going to do is go back in and where you fold it in half like this, you want to make sure, see I'm a little bit out there. So I'm just going to, with my bone folder, re-burnish that. Yeah, I can see once I go right to the top, it was slightly out. Because you want that to fold perfectly it's going to it's going to shift slightly just because i'm using the thick cardstock but you don't want it to be too out so again that bit goes back and this this kind of point here you want to pop towards you while this score line goes away from you and as you bring down these side bits where my thumb is that's how it will all fold in so it's still a little bit off there so i'm just going to pull it down while it's in its position Okay, so that is now the fold that we've got. So next you just want to start with your mats and layers. So this square here is a three and seven eighths of an inch by three and seven eighths of an inch. You can see there that fits perfectly over the top there, giving yourself a nice little border. And then I've got these ones here. So you're going to need two of the white piece and this piece measures three and seven eighths of an inch by five and three eighths of an inch okay and then basically yeah because I wanted to have it on the reverse size we need to reverse side we need to create this shape here okay so what you want to do so with your card stop like this on the right hand side lie your ruler down and you want to just put a little pencil mark or a little marker with your stylus at one and seven eighths of an inch like so okay and you'll do this on both of your white pieces on the same side because you'll see the shape is the same there as it is on the front. And then just with my trimmer, from where that marker is, so I can see my marker there, pop it on an angle, line your marker up with your blade line and the point up with your blade line and cut across and you will get it like so. And then if I open up the card, it's going to sit perfectly, which it does, inside that section there. So now when we bring all that down, once I move it a bit, you want to make sure your borders are the same, but you can see there how that sits in, and obviously that piece is going to go on the top like so. And then this piece here, this is a slightly smaller bit, and you only need the one piece, or you may want to decorate other parts, but this measures five by three and five eighths of an inch and again I don't know why I've marked on that side because it's the wrong <laughs> direction you always want to be doing this bit on your on your right hand side but just as you did with that other piece this time you want to come down again one and seven eighths of an inch so here one and seven eighths put a little pencil mark there I'm going to have to rub my other one out because I'm not going to waste this paper I'm just going to do a pencil mark across like so and then again grab my trimmer and just line up that pencil mark so it's entirely up to you whether you want to just do it by eye with the little markers or 
do a pencil mark right the way through like so and I'll rub that pencil out in a minute but now that piece will sit perfectly over the top like so it's gone a little bit short there actually okay change that so where I said come down at one and seven eighths of an inch you actually want to come down two inches on your white pieces it wasn't quite right so I don't know what I was measuring before I think because I changed the size on the other one I done my measurements slightly different yeah so you can see that I've just gone down a little extra one eighth of an inch so that would bring that to two so I'm just going to trim that again I've just rubbed out the pencil on the other one but I think I just was not concentrating. And now, let's try that again. Oh yeah, much, much better. Okay, so you get that perfect border. So the white ones bring them down two inches on the right hand side with your ruler. And then on that size, it was still one and seven eighths, it was fine. So next, you wanna obviously stick them down. So you stick that one on top. But before I do that, I've got this ribbon. This is that cotton ribbon here. And I actually wanna wrap this around my top decorative paper piece before I stick it down. So I'm just gonna grab my pokey tool there. Okay, and then I'm coming up about an inch and a quarter. I'm just gonna stick that along there. Obviously it's completely optional, but it does look nice, like so. And now I'm going to stick that down onto that mat. Okay, so that's now matted on there. And then I just need to, again, pop some glue on the back here and stick it onto the card. Okay, and when you go to stick it down, open up the card back into that way and then just stick it down. It's much, much easier. And you can line it all up. There you go. You can see that all looks really nice. And then I'm going to stick this piece on. Again, that will stick perfectly in the middle. And then it's just to finish off the decoration. So, and as I always say, use your hot glue or glue dots. Glue dots can be quite good as well, but I always love my hot glue. And then that one's just gonna stick down in the middle there. And then for these lovely little washi stickers, so what I've gone and done, so I've already done one flower here. If I just bring that one up, and get the others here with all my mess. So if I bring that one up there, you can see it's got dimension to it. it, looks really nice. And those are all individual stickers which create this lovely flower. So with the pack, each and every one is an individual. So you can see there those petals, you can peel them off easily. They've kind of got a little bit at the top that you can pull. They're, they are stickier than other washi tapes, there we go, you can see a bit better. Okay, so a little pet, um, petal. And then I'm just using some white card stock. Now you can stick this directly onto your card, but this is a nice way to create like that 3D element. So I've already done a base flower there, which had nine petals, and then I've got this one on top, which has got seven. So I've already done my other one with the nine. So this one I'm gonna do the seven. So I'm just sticking them down. You can peel off like a few there, just like you would normally kind of undo, you know, the washi. And then I'm just going to go around, just kind of overlapping them. And they look really, really nice. It's such a pretty effect. And then that last one in there. It's a little bit of a wonky flower, but then they're not meant to look perfect. I've already gone and fussy cut the leaves, but I've done that exactly the same way. So you can see them all there. And you just peel them off individually. And I just stuck them down and fussy cut them. But again, you don't need to see me... Ooh, you don't need to see me fussy cut... All of those little leaves so I'm just going to do this flower okay like so and then I just went around and just kind of broke down the card just to kind of bend and twist those leaves like so so now that one will sit over that one just want it kind of offset so it overlaps just to see the one underneath just use some of my wet glue there stick that down do it that way actually so you get a bit more of the bit underneath and then with all these individual little leaves I'm just going to do some over there and do that last one like so and then again the matching pearls I'm just going to grab one of the big ones there and again, I'm going to actually put a bit of my 
glue and just pop that right in the middle and then once that kind of glues all in place you can just again lift them all up just to give a bit of dimension and curl the leaves as well and there you have two really nice flowers I think it's just a really just something nice something different to you so I really like them Okay, so now I'm just going to finish it all off and build it all up. So I've got these two strips, which I cut to the same width as this, which was three and seven eighths of an inch. So I'm going to, again, just entirely up to you how you want to do this piece. And I'm going to do the same one down along here, because I liked that one there. And then I'm going to do this time, I'm going to do two, because I've only done one on the other one. It wasn't until after I thought, actually, it looks a bit plain at the top. So I'm going to add this bit in. Like so. There we go. And then I've got these two flowers, so I want to have them similar place before. You don't want to go too over the edge because you want it to fit in the envelope. So make sure your point of your flower doesn't go past the point of the card. These bits can go off. You can actually go off as much as that area there because the width of the card is here, so you can, you know, go over this section and it won't interfere with your envelope. But they are going to stick like so. Again, just because I've got my hot glue on, I'm going to use the hot glue. So I'm just going to pop one just there. And then this one, just get the last of that glue stick from it. Again, make sure my point doesn't go over, like so. And then I've got my, just for you, which I've already put on some matching pink cardstock again being lazy but this also hot glue does give dimension so it's a nice way if you don't if you've run out of foam dots just going to slightly pop it underneath I want it on an angle I don't want to push the glue down too far so it just gives it again some dimension and then I'm going to be using I think I'm going to stick with the pink still because they match the flower so I'm going to have the medium size there and small, and then those really dinky ones, which I'm forever losing. Clusters of three always look nice. I'm not going to do them at the top now because I've got that strip, whereas if you see on that one, see it was blank. But there you have it. So that is the card. Now to quickly make the envelope. So this is a piece of 11 by 11, which is from the paper pack. And then I'm using my We Are Memory Keepers envelope punch board. And down here you've got six by eight, so the card size six by eight, which is what I measured earlier, is telling me I need a paper size that is 11 by 11, and your first score line is at four and seven eighths of an inch. I know there's a glare from the, um, uh, there we go, you can see it, that's better. Why didn't I do that before? There we go. Six by eight, a piece of 11 by 11, your first score line there is at four and seven eighths of an inch. Okay, so pop in one of your sides. I keep saying I'm going to get the new extendable, extended version of this just because when you go to score larger paper you can see it kind of comes off the edge there so when I score now I can only score to there whereas you need to continue but it's fine I'm used to this one but I do keep saying I should get the next one. But I don't make this many big cards for it to have been too much of a problem. Then you flip it and you just want to line up that score guide with this. As I've said before, if anybody would like to know how to use this in more detail, I will link in the tutorial on how to use this scoreboard. It's very handy. And there we go. So you want your paper to resemble, so you see these little mark markers here, these little notches, it resembles that shape there. Okay, so that's that done. Also, the corner punch here at the top you can use. I'll just show you. So you pop in a corner and just round it off and you get a nice edge. So it's, a, it's got two things in one, really, because that's a good handy thing to have anyway. Get rid of the excess. And then you just want to burnish all of the score lines. And then just with my red tape, because that's what I've got to hand, along your shorter sides, you just want to pop a strip on the top of each one. I've come in about half an inch because you can. <laughs> it just means you, you stick closer to the edge of this side. If you stick really close to this piece here, you might have some of that flapping off. So just remove the backing like so, and then fold that down. 
And you usually you do want to use a paper for this, which is why this the B and A paper is perfect. I've made lots of matching envelopes, whereas like the first edition, they're really good quality, but it's more of a cardstock, so it's harder to make a matching envelope. Whereas with this here, you can see now how beautiful does that look? That is just a gorgeous, gorgeous card. I absolutely adore this. So I've got a little glue string there. Just get rid of that. So like I said, I will have the other white one inside because I just didn't prepare those, but that will be there and you can stamp. For this one, I'm going to have just for you and then it's going to have happy birthday stamped in that one. And then this one here is to a special friend and that's got the green there, background. And that's really subtle. I think they both look really nice. All that detail and those washy sticker flowers, I think look gorgeous as well. So there you have it guys. So I hope you've enjoyed these two cards from me today and this another fun diamond style fold card. I've done a few other diamond folds, so I will link that diamond fold playlist in up here as well. So you can go and have a look at that and all my other lovely fun fold cards because I've got quite a few. So if you've enjoyed today's tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching, bye.